Hello my soccer universe! First school day in Austria, so I'm a bit late uh, for the videos today, but you know, we'll get there. In any case, uh, if you wonder why I'm not wearing Glasgow Laskis out there, I'm really done with them. I mean, losing another one, eh. So we will spend hopefully very little time on Austria and I will focus a whole lot then on Germany. Uh, given that I didn't make a dedicated transfer video, I want to briefly touch in each league um, on the transfers as well. Just uh, telling you uh, what are the outstanding transfers in there and not uh, too much more in that. Going through the games and at the end you get all the uh, facts and so on in a nice uh, montage overall. The, you saw it in the Thumb Thunder, it was a really good weekend if you're an away team. Only in both Austria and Germany, only in the last game we got a home win and they were all of them, them were everything but easy. As I said, uh, let's start in the Austrian Bundesliga, give it the results, but before that, uh, quickly, I mean, the transfer window was characterized most by Salzburg making a 50 million net transfer plus by uh, Gavi getting rid of Patzendaka and Mwepo, not getting rid, selling them for a whole lot of money to the Premier League and getting talent in, but already had, having had the talent there, uh, Adeyemi, for instance, uh, that makes them the outstanding team in the league. And as we'll see, I mean, uh, there is no way that Salzburg is not repeating as a champion, even with a totally revamped squad. Uh, among the other teams, I think there were some interesting stuff. I mean, uh, personally for Lask, it was uh, the departure of not only Ramftl, who, who was uh, to Schalke, who was uh, kind, of, kind, of, kind of one of one of those main guys, but especially uh, Trauna. The captain left a huge hole in the defense and they're trying to patch it up left and right. I think overall Lask was very active on the transfer market, did some really good transfers in, but uh, it's not they're not impact transfers, uh, unfortunately, and so uh, it is a whole lot of trouble going there. Uh, I think also Rapid, uh, I mean the the other big trend uh, tra transfer is of course uh, Yusuf Demir going from Rapid to Barcelona where he is now, he, I think he got even number 11 uh, in the squad which is another one of those tra tra transfers that no one here saw. So, uh, uh, Rapid also losing uh, quite a few players to the Bundesliga. So um, it's more the exits than the incoming players that will make the headlines. This round, as I said, all away wins, except for the last one, that was only the last minute. And, you know, not all away wins, we had a draw in, in, in as well. I mean, the standard result, unfortunately, didn't see much, is Rapid uh, losing at home to Admiravaka despite having a 1-0 lead. And then Lask, 2-0 uh, against Austria doesn't even begin to tell the story. The first 20 minutes, Austria could have been easily up by three that it wasn't, was a, actually a travesty. Uh, and I thought, oh, this might actually bode well for Lusk. And uh, they got back them themselves back in the game. And then for most of the sec second half, they maybe controlled a little, little bit more. Um, but it was one of those games where I knew whoever scores first will win, win the game. And it turns out to be Austria Wien from a uh, dead spot situation, a corner, corner kick. At a moment where I think they were would have been actually quite happy with the draw at this point because they were under some, some pressure. But my Tell gave it, yes, there was some VAR review, blah, 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 blah. Then uh, Lask being unlucky as always. Uh, no, no, unlucky, but also clumsy. All confidence gone. It is frustrating to watch them at, uh, at the moment. Knowing where we were two years ago, yes, we lost many important players, but I think everything is kind of not gelling. And um, what I'm also kind of upset about is we have tons of injuries and I think this is now also down to the coaching team. And I really hate to say, but I think a change is in order relatively soon. And I, hate, I really hate to do it. Austria then in stoppage time adding a second one, um, which means Lask now find themselves on bottom, but it's very, very tight in this league. As I said, at the end of the video, you'll, you'll get all the other things as well um, going there. So we'll move 
over to the Bundesliga, uh, where again, transfers first, although you have already the, the results here. Uh, I think the big result, uh, the, the big transfer transfer was, of course, Jaden Sanchez. Again, an exiting transfer, uh, going finally to Manchester United. But I think in Germany itself, it is kind of the pilfering of Bayern uh, of Leipzig. They got the coach, they got Upamecano, they got Sabica, um, and by also getting rid of some uh, quote-unquote old players like Alaba and Boateng. So also this little rejig there, uh, Bayern also having now a completely new leadership. So Romanege out, Hoeneß out. Uh, I'm not sure, Salihamidzic, I'm not sure how long he will actually stay in there because... Uh, Nagelsmann better work out and they better have an outstanding season. Let's put it that way. So uh, those were, that's the main thing. But uh, Leipzig actually did get a few interesting players in, namely Andres Silva from Frankfurt uh, and also Ibrahim Konate from Liverpool. So that's not that uninteresting as well. So, you know, few things in there that uh, were probably of interest. Also, they got Ilaj Moriba. So those two teams are for me the ones that, uh, where there's the most transfer activity and uh, also Frankfurt losing a whole bunch of players and as we'll see they are, they are having a hard time finding their footing. A uh, good one uh, 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 and probably the other really big story is the non-transfer of Erling Holland, who stays with Dortmund despite losing Sancho getting Daniel Marlin, a slightly different player in but also a relatively interesting um, player so I think it will uh, Leipzig big upheaval they need to get going uh, and uh, Dortmund actually you know you're losing Sancho but it's a little bit plug and play as well so uh, maybe this will play in Dortmund's favor and I'm wearing Dortmund this time around because I think on the weekend there were many great games to watch, but Leverkusen Dortmund stood head and shoulders above them all. If you like goals, I mean, if you like defending, uh, stay away from that one. But if you like goals, this was the game to watch. Dortmund winning it 4-3, but having to come back from a deficit three times. Leverkusen three times took, to, 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 took the lead uh, early on through Wirtz, horrible defending. Holland can e equalize. Um, then um, goal by Bellingham is disallowed by a foul in the build of which kind of da 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 da. And then you thought the game had had a term and chic just before the half makes it 2 1. However, an absolute blinder of, of, of a goal where Haaland assists Brandt, who with his back heel puts it for him. Mean, great footwork, puts it into the net. This is an absolute world class goal that looks a little bit clumsy at clumps, clumps first, but it is all intended. It's wonderful, wonderfully played. Makes it 2 2, however, uh, on the back, Tor was a mess. Musa Diaby uh, putting Leverkusen back in, into the lead. However, then when you really thought that Leverkusen actually might have pulled away Dortmund, uh, Rafa Guerrero with a great free kick, another wonderful goal, makes it 3-3 three, three again. And then a penalty decision that in Germany was actually not as much discussed, which I was a little bit surprised because honestly, um, what Kosunu is doing, he tries to fend off um, Reus and like this the movement gets into the face of Reus. I thought it was a soft penalty. This was not intended to slap him in the face. He just wanted to block it off. Yes, it looks a little bit weird in replay, but if you look at it in real time, yeah, the, the hand lands in face and maybe, yeah, uh, rules, blah, blah, blah. I found it. I honestly found it a soft penalty. Holla pulled, pulled, pulled it away, and then the Leverkusen fans, who are this family club, yeah, they're throwing all kinds of uh, drinking cups at him. Holland actually thought about drinking from one, but in the last second he pulled it away, which was also not that smart, smart one too. I actually thought when he was celebrating, and it was right in front of the Leverkusen stands, um, I had the feeling that he wanted to do his general celebration, but then he held back because he didn't want to incite a riot or whatever. Well, he in a way did any, any, any way. But you gotta say, I mean, what I have to give to Holland is is instinct and hunger for goals. He is exactly there where he needs to be. Yes, for a penalty penalty. Great game. Absolutely great, great game. Maybe a draw would have been deserved in that one. Uh, also Freiburg, Köln. Köln actually should probably have won this one. Um, they had 
enough chances, for, uh, but a yellow red, stupid yellow red for Kainz, where he shoves an opponent with already having a yellow, he gets a and sends sent off off with a second yellow and then an own goal, but Chichus sends it to 1-1. One, one. Wolfsburg continued their great start with a less than convincing win over Kreuter Fürth, but a win nonetheless. Um, Mecha in the 10th already putting Wolfsburg on the way, Kreuter Fürth. I think Reuterfeld is one of those teams that will get relegated. Uh, they really look outclassed there. And very late on, uh, Wout Weichhorst puts them on, on, on the way. I think since they will be playing Champions League, was a little bit of a, a so-and-so. They didn't put in the full performance there. Mainz get in Hoffenheim. Uh, uh, Augsburg is very interesting. They uh, ship four at home and manage to stay goal those goal, goal, goal is away from home. The big, the other big one was of course Leipzig against Bayern, which Bayern clinically. I think the score, the final scoreline was a little bit uh, too harsh. It was also with uh, handball calls or you know the penalty calls. In the second minute, maybe Thomas Müller, sh maybe handball in his own box, and then Leipzig would have to like, would get an early penalty. <laughs> but then uh, on the other side, a nothing situation. Uh, no one is complaining and suddenly the VAR says, yeah, here it goes and Lewandowski gets in a 12 minute penalty. And that kind of set the tone. Leipzig just couldn't, they invested a lot and got very little out of it. Um, they, after the half, Musiala took over. He scores a, a great, great, great goal to make it 2-0. Then Andre Silva thought he had put one back. Just fractional offside. Uh, it was with you could see it with your um, naked eye. Uh, and then Sané makes it 3 0, and that, 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 that is the game. Uh, four minutes later, Lima with a great shot from far out, but it was nothing happen happening. Chupumuting makes it 4 1. It was a game where, you know, the margins all decided for Bayern. The scoreline was a little bit too high, in for my feeling. However, Bayern was the deserved winner there. I have not seen much of the other games. I saw maybe the last 20, uh, the last 20 minutes of Gladbach against Bielefeld, where they were repeating um, that, yes, is a 3-1, the scoreline is very clear. I saw the third goal from uh, Zakaria. Uh, but uh, it was really, 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 really tight for uh, Gladbach for most of the time. So with that, we have now that uh, Wolfsburg continued a great start, Bayern and Dortmund mo mo moving up, Le uh, Le Leverkusen moving a little bit down and Leipzig really, really, really down there as well. And so that was it for this week. I leave you with all the stats, tables and so on that, that you would like, like to have at the end of this video. Drop a line below what you thought about this round. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might actually enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and also hit the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day.